All right, so we got everything we need here. Um, three 330 ohm resistors, four jumper wires, the board, the breadboard, and a hookup. So all we're gonna do is hook up three pins, the R, G, and the B, to nine, 10, and 11 pins. You'll see on there, um, next to digital, it has PWN with a little tilde, and then next to nine, 10, and 11, and some others, uh, it has the tilde next to it. It just means that there's a, a pulse width modulation um, attached to those certain pins. That way you can control the, the power that those pins receive through the program. And that's how you're gonna control the red, green, and blue values to change colors on the LED. So the first thing I would do, um, we're just gonna it doesn't really matter what order you put them in, I just am gonna do them red, green, blue. So red's gonna go in nine, and then green and ten, blue and eleven, and I'm gonna hook those up right across on the board. Doesn't really matter where as long as you're gonna line them up eventually. And to protect the um, the LED, so inside the RGB LED, there's actually three different LEDs inside there, a red, a green, and a blue one. Um, and to protect each one, you're going to put a resistor on. I'm using 330 ohm. Um, you can use less, you can use more. It just depends. It's just going to make it either brighter or dimmer. But you want to have one. Otherwise, you run the risk of blowing it out. And so my board's a little stiff, so it takes me a second to stick them in. But I'll get it. Like I said, just make sure you're lining them up. And you can cut them down so they're not in your way, but I just got the ones that came in the in the pack. And then you have on the LED, you have um, the ones that came with the pack is uh, it's a common anode RGB LED. So this longer pin is a positive. It's where you're going to get your power from. But they also make some that look exactly like that. Um, this would go to a negative, this would go to the ground pin, um, but ours, we're going to take this to the 5 volt on the board. Um, so we can do that first. Let's we'll take it, you can't see it, but we're doing the 5 volt on the board, and we'll put it over here on the back end. Like so. Well, we can put it in between, that's what we'll do. So it lines up better. All right, and so we got. So you're gonna take each one of these and stick them in the the same path you have your uh, other pins in, making sure that the longest one goes with the power. That's what I'll do. It's a little tricky sticking them in because they're all this different lengths but we'll get it all right and now uh, we're going to take a look at the code and then we'll come back and run it. Alright, so I thought I'd give you a shot of uh, the board after it's connected so you can kind of see where it goes. I know it was hard to see when I was putting it in. So I hope you can see that. I don't know if that helps.
probably pretty hard to see. All right, so here we have a program I've written already, or I shouldn't say I wrote it. I stole it from learn.adafruit.com and just altered a little bit of it to suit our needs um, because on there I think they use a cathode RGB LED and we're using an anode. So like I talked about before, that longer pin went to ground. Ours goes to the 5 volt. Um, so we're going to have to actually modify our code just a little bit to make it work for us. And I'll, exp I'll explain it when we get there. So at the top we're setting our three variables, um, three integers for our pins, red, green, and blue. And then in the setup where we initialize, you're going to call the command pin mode like we did before in the last, um, last video. Pass in our variable red pin, which would be pin 11, and set pin 11 as an output. Uh, do the same for the green and the blue. And in the, in the loop, we're calling a function called set color. Now we haven't talked about functions yet, but I'll explain it here. Um, so we have to set up a another little piece of code that the loop is going to call whenever it gets to it. So it's going to call set color, and then it has three variables, 255, 0, and 0. And you can put in whatever you want. Um, and it will get passed into this this area. So 255. So integer red becomes 255. Um, green becomes zero, and blue becomes zero, whenever this is called. And so it'll pass these variables into this into this slot, and then um, it'll go ahead and use that use these integers inside this part of the code itself. So the way you get the LEDs to light up is like we did before. I think before we did a digital write, but this is a analog write and it still works. All right, so you're gonna analog write, use the command, and then pass in what pin we want, which was pin 11, I believe, and then and then we're gonna use red. So red was 255. So 255 goes into this one. Um, and because ours is an anode RGB LED, it kind of it kind of works backwards. So we're going to have to actually minus red from 255 to get the correct color. Um, if you're using a cathode, all you would have in here um, is just this. But ours, um, we need that in there to make that actually red. All right, do the same thing for the green and the blue. And so whenever this set color gets called these three variables will be passed in um, and it's going to write to the uh, LED itself and create whatever color you passed in so on this one um, the three values are red green and blue so the first one is red the second one is green the third one is blue 255 is our max here so 255 red would be completely red and then uh, 0 and 0. Now if you were to add other numbers into this it would mix them as you'll see in a second uh, to create other colors and that's what's cool about the um, RGB LED we're using. Alright so this one it's gonna the loop itself is actually going to create one color and then delay for a second create another color and so on and then it'll just loop back around so the first one creates red, as you can see 255 is full red, and then no green and blue. The second one creates green, third one creates blue. And the fourth one here, when you mix red and green together, you get yellow. So the way they did that was maxed out red, maxed out green, and left blue um, at zero. And you can make any color, any color um, that you can think of. Uh, it helps if you just look up some of the RGB values or um, or you can just experiment until you get the color you want. And that's about it. So we're going to upload it and see if it works. And there we have it. You got your uh, RGB LED all up and running.